Welcome to the Weekend Homestead. One of the things I figured out was I have a lot of time I spend in the car and I'm trying to figure out times when I can answer questions and do Q&A. So I thought I'd start trying to do this thing I like to call car Q&A, where basically when I'm in the car driving, I'll answer some questions. Um, it's not gonna have a, a lot of production stuff like my normal videos where we're flying and doing all these different things, but I'm gonna try to connect with you, the viewer, and um, answer your questions. We get a lot of emails. We get a lot of things on our Facebook page. Uh, we got a lot of things from our subscribers, new people. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've had a lot of new people uh, subscribe to the channel, so welcome. Uh, we'll have many more videos coming up, a lot of updates on the house, a lot of updates on a, a bunch of different things, but I thought I'd take this time to take the next uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes and just answer a whole pile of questions for folks while we're driving down the road on our way to the homestead for the weekend. So, here we go. So a while back I did a video um, called Solo Trip to the Cabin. Basically it was last year I went out and did a bunch of spring projects and stuff on the property and, and really tried to get a bunch of things done and uh, did a video about it. And Dave from Clean Slate Farms uh, made a comment asking about, hey, are those the logs that you're gonna use for uh, doing mushrooms? Uh, give you a little bit of background. Dave from Clean State Farms has been a, a friend. I've talked to him a couple times on the phone. Uh, he actually sent us a, a really cool gift basket that uh, we're gonna uh, do on mail time coming up with some really cool stuff that he has, some balsamic vinaigrettes, some uh, things for our apple trees, and just a couple things for the house, and it's really cool stuff. His channel is Clean Slate Farms. Uh, I'll have a link up in the corner somewhere one of the sides uh, that'll link to his channel. Check it out if you get a chance to go over there. He's kind of new getting into the YouTube thing. He's been around for a while, but he's getting back into putting out videos. Really cool stuff. And one of his videos had to do with uh, inoculating some logs. And he and I have been talking about uh, um, inoculating logs with mushrooms to have mushrooms out on the property. Uh, we have an area of the property we call the Mushroom Grove. It's kind of a lowland area where there's always mushrooms. We've found lion's mane there. We've got uh, hen of the woods. Uh, I found morels out on the property and so on. And uh, he and I had been talking about this idea where you take a log, you drill some holes in the log, inoculate it, cover it with some wax, and he put it out in the woods and eventually uh, um, we'll have mushrooms that grow out there. So what our thought was is um, getting some logs and inoculating them. I have some popple trees that are near the house that are kind of looking a little suspicious. Like if they went, they'd probably hit the house. They could lay on the driveway or the power line. So we're going to take them down, uh, grind out the stumps this spring. But one of the logs that uh, pearl oyster mushrooms grow really well on is popple. So our thought is, is once we cut those trees down, we're going to save the logs and uh, inoculate them. So actually those will be the logs that I end up using. Uh, Dave, the question you had about the logs that I collected, those ones actually ended up getting split up and were part of the huge log pile that I showed uh, in, a, in my going to the cabin video. Um, that's all of our firewood. It was from a bunch of projects that we had on the property. That stuff's already been processed, so I'm gonna need to find some new logs. But from what I'm reading, when you cut down a, a tree in the springtime, you want fresh logs to inoculate. So if you get a chance, check out Dave's channel. He's got some pretty cool stuff. Been a really cool friend, really supportive of our channel. But I thought I'd answer your question and just let you know that the logs that we had in the video were all chopped up and already made into firewood, so I'm getting some nice fresh ones. But we definitely will be doing a video about how to inoculate some uh, logs and hopefully maybe this year we get some oyster mushrooms and we can uh, make some awesome steaks and have mushrooms with them. So hope that answers your question. All right, uh, next question comes from a viewer, Raspberry Rock. Uh, he asked in one of my maple syrup videos, uh, which by the way, if you get a chance, check them out. Uh, again, I'll have the link in, in here about the maple syrup stuff. Very, very popular this time of year. Snow's starting to melt and we've been getting a lot of views and a lot of questions about maple syrup. But one question I've gotten a couple times and Raspberry Rock also asks is, where do I get the food grade buckets that I use for maple syrup? Great question. On the homestead, we use buckets everywhere. Five gallon buckets, preferably with lids, to store corn, store seed, keep the mice out of them. But one of the other things I have is I have about two dozen buckets that are food grade with lids on them that we use for our maple syrup. Uh, where I get the buckets from is I actually go to a local bakery and I go to the local sandwich shop and uh, my old man actually has a relationship with the guy at the sandwich shop and they get in mayonnaise, they get in all sorts of stuff, uh, ingredients, and same thing with the bakery, they get all sorts of stuff, ingredients inside of five gallon food grade buckets. 
we go in there very politely we say hey uh, what do you guys do with your extra buckets and lids and uh, we got a deal worked out that one of the guys at the store just takes the buckets stores them in the back they're already washed out with the covers on them we show up and uh, pick them up and they're really good about it some places will charge you a little bit like ten dollars for a half dozen buckets or whatever but that's where we get our food grade buckets from is we go to a local sandwich shop or we go to a local bakery and try to get them there because they always are getting product in in five gallon food grade buckets and they just throw them out or recycle them or send them back to the factory so that's kind of where we get them from but raspberry rock thanks for the question and uh cool cabin that you're building out there i've been watching some of the videos with cameron and we really enjoy uh that view that you have off your deck on your little cabin is awesome so keep up the good work and thanks for subscribing to us all right chief mike uh has our next question he was watching one of our remodeling videos and uh asked a question about the basement he said um, what chemical do you use in the basement to get the white the walls so white after having all that mold on there and how did what kind of paint did you use on them to clean them up um what I'm going to do is on the screen right here, I don't remember the names of them, but I'll take a picture of the bottles and the containers and put them here. We used two different products. One of them was a spray product uh, that basically was kind of a disinfectant bleach type product. Um, we had a mask on when we used it, mixed it in a sprayer that we'd normally spray weeds with, and you spray it on the wall and what it does is it kills all, all the mold and kind of bleaches it a little bit. Then we used a... a bristle brush and we scrubbed all the walls down right to the concrete with a, a real tough brush you can rub on concrete and scrape on it and as long as you don't go crazy on the grout for the most part you can get whatever is kind of growing or stuck or paint or chips on the walls got all that scraped off and then washed down to the bottom once everything was cleared uh, there's a paint container I'll put the picture up again here that paint um, product is like an epoxy and it's really heavy duty make sure you have plenty of ventilation because man that stuff stinks to the point where I'd use it and I'd get such a bad headache I'd go for a walk afterwards just because it smelled the basement up but essentially what it does is it encapsulates everything behind there and gives you a good solid base one it absorbs into the concrete to kind of seal the pores a little bit and then two it covers up and encapsulates everything there now that the basement is all basically primed with that epoxy material I'm just gonna take regular latex white paint paint the walls and then do the mechanical room and the storage room with those white walls on the other walls we're actually not gonna paint them we're gonna frame them in at some point in time when we finish out the basement we'll do spray foam insulation on there which will also encapsulate and seal that area and close it up and that's how we're gonna take care of that area but thanks for the question. If you have any other questions on it, feel free to drop me an email. It's will at theweekendhomestead.com. The product was at home improvement store like Menards or Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. I think it can be found anywhere. It's pretty straightforward stuff. All right, our next question comes from our ATV clearing trail. Um, I had my friend Jerry come out to the property with his skid steer and uh, clear the property um, using a forestry harvester and it was awesome we had a fun day out there got a lot of work done but in the video I made a comment about some of uh, the grass mixes and the clover mixes and PA prepper asks how does that grass mix that you're currently working with work in the shade or in the woods and why did you pick that specific one well PA prepper the, the one item I'd have to say about that specific grass mix is I didn't buy it for scientific reasons of I know it would work in the shade or anything like that. I actually bought it because it was on closeout at Tractor Supply and it was cheap. So for me to get a 50 pound bag of grass seed for you know $39 and um, you know they had a couple of them and I worked it out so I actually paid $35 a bag if I bought all three of them. And so I bought 150 pounds of grass seed and then I had already the clover mix. And I know that the clover mix works out in the woods because we've done it before in the food plots. So our thought was why not give some of the grass a try and see, and we tried it in a couple of areas in the property. Super deep shaded areas, it doesn't work very well. But for the most part, if it's uh, partially shaded or gets at least a little sunshine through, um, it works really well. In the deep, dark areas of the property, unfortunately, I. I can't get anything to grow there. Hopefully the mulch will hold up on the property on those spots. But uh, the grass mix is called Kentucky 13. They carry it at Tractor Supply Store. Um, 
They usually carry it in big, huge 50 pound bags, like I said. I bought three of them last year. We're gonna try them in a bunch of different pro uh, spots on the property. Hopefully it'll uh, you know, slow down the erosion and the problems that we're having. But uh, I thought I'd uh, you know, cover that again because there has been a number of questions, including yours, about well, what the heck is Kentucky 13? It's just a style of field grass that uh, farmers use. But uh, yeah, any, any grass will do. Uh, I usually try to buy in bulk and then I just spread it thick and hopefully it sticks. So, you know, that's kind of the way we go. Um, I try to be a value shopper when it comes to that stuff more than scientific. I know they make grass seed. Um, I know there's strains of grass seed that work really well in dark areas. The problem is the bags are usually really expensive and I just, I don't want to spend that kind of money when we have as much space as we need to cover with that. So hopefully that answers your question. All right, so our next question comes from Father and Son uh, 2015, um, their YouTube channel out there. They've been very supportive of our channel, actually friends of, I think, the boss of the swamp and uh, some other YouTubers, and they found us. And have... his question was uh, regarding the cool sky shots. How do you get those cool sky shots you do on your property? Uh, great question. Uh, actually, really simple. I have a DJI drone. I ended up getting it last year on Amazon on a lightning deal. They had uh, just a super uh, cheap closeout on them. I think it was like $650 or $700 because the newer model was coming. So I could buy the older model at a discount. And if you know me, I like to buy stuff on a discount. So um, found it online, been practicing a lot with it and uh, learning about how to use it better on the property. I mean, Cameron likes to watch me fly it around, but in all reality, I like to use it to get some great video shots for you guys of the property, um, use it as a tool to do things around the property, and uh, you know, it's just all around great. So I have a, it's a DJI drone, uh, Model 3. It's last year's model, I got it on Amazon. Uh, if you search for them on Amazon, there's tons of them out there, but that's what I use. It took a little while to get kind of good at getting it to fly where you want or getting it to hover and things like that but uh, I hope to continue to use it in the videos uh, had a lot of fun had a lot of positive comments on the photos and the video that we're producing from the from the drone so I hope to uh, keep it as uh, part of the show one other comment to the YouTube uh, subscriber base that we have um, if you get a chance I don't tend to do a lot of shout outs or go check out another channel or those types of things just because we have so much stuff going on but I want to take a moment in this series if you can go over to their channel at the top here in the corner I'll have a link to their channel otherwise at the end of the video there will be a little circle uh, if you get a chance go check them out they're just getting started on YouTube um, I think he's got 85 or 90 subscribers and they're kind of putting together some cool videos about uh, bird houses and things like that and if you get a chance, definitely uh, check them out. And for Father and Son uh, 2015, I did get your box in the mail. I have it in the back of the car, and we're going to be covering that in a future mail time video. So I appreciate the box. Um, I'll go through it in detail. I want to give it its due justice because it's some pretty cool stuff that you sent up. So thanks for your question. Thank you for your continued support. And uh, keep putting out those YouTube videos. I mean, the projects you're doing with your son are really cool. So awesome stuff. Thanks a lot. All right, so I wanted to cover a couple of other items here, just some uh, other things. We have gotten a lot of emails, um, a lot of messages on Facebook, Instagram, all over the place regarding the little off-grid cabin that I showed in my wintertime walk video. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I've got it attached here if you want to see a reference, but I did a little quick tour of that. At some point in time, I will do a, a real walkthrough and we'll take a little bit of time to go through and show how it works. People are asking, is it on solar? Is it on generator? Do you have propane? Does that kitchen work? How do you have water? Is there, you know, bathrooms? And are you gonna insulate it? Are you gonna fix it up? Are you gonna tear it down? And there's a lot of stuff to cover. I just don't have the time to cover it right now. But I do promise that uh, as we get closer to spring, I'm thinking that when we're doing the boiling down of the maple syrup and I got a lot of time on the upper homestead, I'll do a real walkthrough. I'll print out the list of all the questions and I'll try to cover everybody's questions about the cabin. I appreciate uh, the interest in it. I definitely want to focus in on it because it's kind of a cool little piece of, of, on our property. Um, one question I do want to answer because people are asking, well, where is that in comparison to the house? Uh, just to get everyone oriented, the house and the garage that we're doing the remodel on is on what I call the lower homestead. 
there's two real um, grade differences between the property. There's the upper part, which is where the off-grid house is, the barn and the, the apple orchard, and then a lot of the acreage is there. And then attached to that, there's something that I call the lower part, which is you go down this really super steep hill, and when I say steep hill, it's a very steep hill. You go down this steep hill, and when you get to the bottom of the hill, it kind of flattens out and there's a wooded area. Well, down at the end of that wooded area and that acreage is actually where the house is and the garage is. So our scenario is that house and that garage are on the grid. We have running water, we have showers, bathrooms, everything like that. And then we have a trail system that takes you to the upper homestead, which is another series of uh, 40 acre plots that are all kind of connected together that make the rest of the homestead and that's where that little cabin is. That little cabin came along with one of the purchases of the 40 acres and at one point in time we thought of fixing it up, one point in time we thought of tearing it down and building a house up there and so on and I can get into the details when we do the tour of the house. The short of it is right now I use it as a storage facility to store wood and then we also use it kind of as a little home base. When we go work at the upper homestead we'll put you know Lincoln's pack and play and we'll put that kind of stuff inside of there so if we need to put them down for a nap we've got a shelter to put them down for a nap in so we kind of use it as a little base camp at the upper part of the property and we're kind of liking doing that so what we're thinking of doing is when we finish all of our projects down below and we get all of our summer projects together potentially um, take a look at doing some remodeling to that to make it a more functional property make it a little off-grid cabin and always leave it an off-grid cabin but maybe we'll put in some solar panels or you know rehook up the generator and the propane and those types of things so got a little bit of work I need to do on it I promise everybody I'll do another video regarding the off-grid cabin um, keep sending your messages and your questions and your emails if you do want to email me again it's will at the weekend um, a lot of people have been sending messages that way just saying hey I have an off-grid cabin what are you doing with yours because I want to do some of that stuff in mine so I'm willing to help people out I'm willing to answer questions and stuff like that I'm not an expert but you know I'll tell you what our experience has been and you know I hope to uh, you know shed a little bit more light on what that uh, part of our property is and get into a little bit more so expect more to come on that uh, last item is I was actually hoping to do a video with Cameron this weekend it was supposed to be boys weekend um, and actually uh, father and son 205 uh, Gary and his son or sorry guy guy and his son sent us up a box that had some really cool bird feeders in it and some drawings and things like that and Cameron and I were gonna go through and do it but uh, unfortunately there was a, a little accident this weekend uh, Cameron was out on the playground this week at school running around slid on some loose gravel and uh, did a head plant basically right into a teeter-totter that was coming up and caught him right in the eyebrow so I spent five hours in the emergency room yesterday with him He'll be okay, full recovery, no concussion or anything like that. So any well wishes you have, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, a bunch of people found out on Facebook and Instagram the other day and I've been reading the comments and it's been uh, keeping them uh, excited. He's not with me, he's at home this weekend and uh, he's gonna make a full recovery. But if you happen to, leave some well wishes down in the comments. Uh, when I get back, I promised him I'd sit down and uh, and read to him. Well, he's uh, He's doing well, he's getting better, he's uh, pretty sore, his face looks like uh, he had a pretty good fight, but in all reality he's just running on the playground and, and uh, busted up his eyebrow and, and has a black eye and is all swollen, so mom said uh, no boys weekend this weekend, so I left him at home. But So that's really it for uh, car Q&A, hopefully uh, the audio quality of this turned out pretty good, hopefully I didn't ramble on too long and you guys made it all the way to the end. If you ever leave a comment on our Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube accounts, uh, I'll respond to the questions if I can. Otherwise, I might save them up for another one of these. I spend, like I said, I spend a lot of time in the car, and you know, it'd be really easy to uh, do this uh, and answer questions. So, getting close to our destination here, so I'm gonna have to sign off. But uh, thanks for watching. Like I said, leave me comments below. Uh, if you got any well wishes, that'd be awesome to leave for Cameron. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have some more updates coming up here in future videos.